you know, the Bible, the Bible, you know, notes these people groups, but it says nothing about one particular race being inferior to another. That's, that's absolute nonsense. So, in fact, the Bible says we all descended from Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course, Adam and Eve fell into sin. Adam is the, the federal head of the human race, plunged all of humanity into sin by his fall. So we all have a sin nature. And that's the real problem is, is a sin nature, a depraved nature. And that's why we need a Savior, a, a perfect, a sinless Son of God who came and died for our sins. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Creation Podcast, the show where we discuss the science that confirms scripture. I'm your host, Trey. Uh, Racism and its foul fruits have plagued humanity for thousands of years. And in the past couple of centuries, it only seems to have reared its ugly head all the more. There are some that claim the Bible promotes permanent racial divisions and is therefore either the cause or at the very least, a major driving force behind modern racial hatreds. But is this true? Uh, In this two-part series, we'll look at the claims made about scripture and the worldview that is truly responsible for modern racism. Uh, To discuss that with me today, I have ICR geneticist, Dr. Jeff Tompkins. Thank you for being here, Dr. Tompkins. It's great to be here. Yeah. Uh, So this is... This is a big topic. Um, this is something that is in the limelight frequently, uh, at the very least in America and uh, also around the world, but uh, particularly here in America, this is, a, this is a big topic of conversation. So I want to know, scientifically speaking, what is a race? Well, the term race actually um, got its origins really with Darwin and Huxley um, and these people in the 1800s. And I don't even like the term because I think its origins is <laughs> uh, is, is racist. Yeah. Um, you know, people are, are have different ethnic groups. There's different people groups, different languages, you know, different nations. But the fact of the matter is there are no different races. We're all <laughs> of the human race, if you want to say that. But there are people groups and, and there are, you know, uh, differences in various traits that people have, but we're all people. We all descended from Adam and Eve. And then uh, there was a flood, a global flood about 4,500 years ago. And then um, three, you know, breeding human couples that were Noah's sons and their uh, three wives repopulated the earth. And, And so that's our heritage as humans. And so you know, they're really, I, I don't even like the term race. I, I don't use it, you know, when I give talks and uh, I use the term people groups mm-hmm. because that's really what, what we're talking about. Because, you know, humans are a hodgepodge of traits. You know, there's dif- different shades of skin color based on the melanin you have in your skin. Uh, there's other traits. Um, for example, the, the Asian eye, so to speak, which is an epicanthic fold. But you don't just see that in Asia. You see that in uh, people groups in South Africa, even in Northern Europe, where there's people groups that are blonde-haired, blue-eyed, and they have Asian eyes. <laughs> so, you know, humanity is just a hodgepodge of traits, but all that genetic variation was really built in uh, to Adam and Eve and then was passed on through a genetic bottleneck, which which was the flood. Mm. Uh, so there's probably a larger amount of human diversity before the flood, but even now we see, you know, lots of diversity. You know, there's people that are very short and people that are very tall and people have different shades of skin color and, you know, different, uh, you know, types of hair. And uh, yeah, it's just, but it's just human diversity. Mm-hmm. Good. So when I think of, of race, I mean, to me, it seems almost like maybe this is just kind of like the evolutionary culture that, I grew up in. Right. Uh, but it's almost like, it almost seems like it means subspecies. Is that what they're using it to mean or like, uh, a different stratification of humanity? Yeah. The the idea of race goes back to the 1800s to Charles Darwin and the formulation of evolutionary theory. Mm -hmm. Um, Huxley promoted it. He was known as Darwin's bulldog. 
And and the idea of race is keeps getting perpetuated. Even though most people today would would say they're not racist, you you go and you fill out a form somewhere, and they ask you, you know, "What are you? Are you Hispanic? Are you you know mm-hmm. Caucasian or whatever?" And you know it's it's perpetuated still, even you know even in stuff like that. And uh, today, when we think that like you know, there's, there's a huge push to, to not be racist, which is again, to clarify, not being racist is a very good thing, but it seems like it's so baked into just the culture. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's baked in. And you know, what's interesting, um, is that even a modern evolutionist, uh, his name was Stephen Jay Gould, uh, noted this. So this isn't something that creationists are, are saying, look, racism started, you know, back with Darwin and, and his theories on evolution, natural selection. And, but even, you know, honest evolutionists that are in this modern era admit that really the, the racism really took off with the theory of evolution that, that Darwin was promoting. And I've got a quote from uh, Stephen Jay Gould. Sure. That I'd like to read. For sure. So Stephen Jay Gould was one of the most uh, famous evolutionists of the modern era. And he said this, biological arguments for racism may have been common before 1850, but they increased by orders of magnitude following the acceptance of evolutionary theory. Mm. In the 1800s, you have to think, you know, who are the big power blocks in the world? Well, it was Great Britain. The British Empire was was global. Uh, Germany was very powerful. And the United States was was very powerful. And these ideas of, of evolution, you know, really prospered with these very prosperous global empires. And that's how it really got pushed out there. Um, you know, so there was, there was this, this geopolitical factor involved too. But, mm-hmm. you know, the general idea was that there were subspecies of humans. Yeah, you're right. That's what Darwin promoted, uh, that there were races that were inferior to the Anglican race in England and, and Europe and so forth. So... So you've got geopolitics pushing, um, you know, a really terrible uh, idea, which is Darwin's evolutionary ideas of, of humans. Right. Okay. Well, we were talking about 1850. I'd like to go, uh, go back even further because there are some who are like, well, you know, if you look at the Old Testament, God is actually like, there are people who are like, God is racist because he, you know, separated the Israelites and he didn't like the Canaanites and all of that jazz. Uh, so I want to talk about like biblical divisions of man. Um, let, let's look at the divisions of man at that time and, and, and see if there's any validity to what some of these people are saying. Is race ever mentioned in scripture? No, race is not mentioned in scripture. Uh, people groups are. And in fact, we've got some uh, some ideas here from scripture where, where that's actually touched upon. So in Genesis uh, 10.5, uh, 10, 10.20, and 31, we hear mentioned tongues, uh, families, nations, lands. Uh, and then at the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, we're told about all the, the saints, the saved people that, that gave their lives to Christ and receive the redemption provided by his uh, blood sacrifice for our sins. And it says there that there's going to be people from every nation, kindred, people, and tongue. Mm. And so, you know, the Bible, the Bible, you know, notes these people groups, but it says nothing about one particular race being inferior to another. That's, that's absolute nonsense. So, in fact, the Bible says we all descended from Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course, Adam and Eve fell into sin. Adam is the, the federal head of the human race, plunged all of humanity into sin by his fall. So we all have a sin nature. And that's the real problem is, is a sin nature, a depraved nature. And that's why we need a Savior, a, a perfect, a sinless Son of God who came and died for our sins. He was perfectly holy, perfectly righteous. He never sinned but he paid the price for our sins. Everyone sins. Mm-hmm. Everyone since Adam up until the present time where we now have, you know, 8 billion people on the face of the earth. And so it's not a race uh, problem, really. It's a sin problem. Mm-hmm. And, you know, evolution is, is, is a sinful idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the theory of evolution that there are sub races of humans and, 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 
you know, inferior races of humans and so forth. That's just, that's just pure evil. And that's, that's from the sinful heart, a sinful imagination of mankind. So when, I guess at least in the modern era, when, uh, you know, as an American, uh, racism is often, you know, hinged with slavery because of America's horrible, you know, very wrong, very horrible past with slavery and racism. And they did go hand in hand. And so I think some people look at scripture because the Bible does mention slavery and it does mention enslaving people groups. Uh, you know, the Israelites were enslaved by the Egyptians right. uh, way back in the day. Uh, so can we talk about like uh, slavery as far as the Bible goes? Not, not what we would consider, uh, you know, the slavery today, uh, but what does the slavery look like in the Bible? Uh, because it does talk about it. Uh, so I guess my first question is like, does the Bible prescribe slavery? No, the Bible does not prescribe uh, slavery. It doesn't tell us anywhere in there to go and enslave uh, people and force them into servitude. And in fact, slavery is a huge global issue right now. You know, there's the human trafficking uh, issue that's that's going on globally. It's huge. That's slavery. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's children, um, you know, by the thousands or perhaps even millions being forced into, you know, factories and, and, and mines and in places uh, around the world, in third world countries where they're being enslaved, you know, to, to make a profit. Um, it, it's going on all over the earth today. And of course, the United States, you know, uh, has a bad history, um, you know, with the slave trade mm-hmm. beginning, particularly in the South, but it was all over the Caribbean, all over South America. It wasn't just in the United States. And, um, but you know, the Bible does not prescribe that, but the apostle Paul did write to, write letters uh, to people that were born again and saved in churches um, around, uh, you know, Asia. And he did mention uh, that the people that were enslaved, you know, still needed to, to serve Jesus and to, to walk in love and, uh, and respect and so forth. So, but he didn't prescribe slavery, even though it was mentioned. Mm. He was just telling people to live a godly life if they were, you know, born again believers and to be an example uh, of the gospel. And so, yeah, and he's, in fact, Paul said, you know, if you can be free, that go for it. Yeah. You know. Um, so, uh, no, the Bible does not prescribe a slavery. It does talk about it in different contexts, but it never prescribes it. Yeah. Usually, I, I think, we think of like Old Testament slavery. There's often like an element of, of conquest to it. It's, uh, it's, you know, geopolitical versus like, uh, enslaving a race just to enslave a race. Right. Well, I mean, it was common. I mean, it's been common throughout the history of mankind. Slavery has, has been an issue for thousands of years. Probably we don't know what, what was going on with it before the global flood, but I'm sure it was going on. Uh, we know that, that after, uh, the global flood, we hear all kinds of stories about, the Assyrians, you know, conquering people, the Babylonians conquering people, uh, as you mentioned, Israel enslaved in Egypt. I, I mean, it just it's just a fact of sinful humanity. It, it goes on, and um, it's not like it's some recent phenomena. But, you know, it the idea that, that there were groups that were inferior or human race is inferior, we can definitely pin that to Charles Darwin and... Huxley and, uh, you know, these people that were pushing evolution in the 1800s, and it got worse in the early 1900s. Yeah. In fact, uh, the United States had all kinds of, of racial uh, programs going on uh, around the country. Uh, they were very well interconnected with what was going on in Germany. Mm-hmm. And, uh, in fact, Hitler was the Time Magazine Man of the Year at one point right before World War II. So, Isn't that terrifying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, the United States, uh, you know, the elites in the United States and in Europe and, you know, they, they had an agenda of really pushing racism and, and because they thought they were superior and it was all based on evolutionary ideas. You know, Hitler was a hardcore evolutionist and, and his uh, racism against the Jews was, was based in evolutionary theory. And we actually... 
Uh, we did some podcasts earlier with uh, Dr. Galuza, uh, president of ICR, about the Holocaust, and I'll link those here. So if you want to learn more about that specific uh, topic, please go, go watch those. They're, they're fascinating. Um, okay, so pre-evolution, though. Let, let's talk a little bit more about uh, pre-evolution. So there's clearly hatred. Like, there's hatred of other people, um, but maybe it's not related to race. So, like, I think about uh, pre-connected world. You know, we have the internet now, and it's like, if you want to learn something about any other ethnic group, just, just Google it, right? Just hop on the internet, and you can learn about their culture, et cetera. But back in the day, that wasn't possible. So let's say you're you're a, a small people group, you're expanding a little bit, and you come across another people group, you don't understand their language, you don't... Uh, they seem very warlike, you know? And so, like, uh, is, is that, like... Could that be considered racism, or is that just something different? No, that's just the wicked heart of mankind. Okay. Um, and, you know, a lot of factors play into that, you know. Wanting to conquer someone's territory and take over their space. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then... Uh, so, you know, what's interesting, and, you know, that kind of brings up the idea, you know, where do people groups come from to begin with? Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking races, I'm talking people groups. And so after the flood, um, the world was being repopulated by Noah, Noah's three sons and their wives. And the Bible talks about the table of nations and about the, the different nations that sprung up, uh, people groups mm -hmm. from Noah's, you know, three sons and their wives. But there's an important uh, story in Genesis, and it's the story of the Tower of Babel. So after the flood, people, as they were repopulating quite quite vigorously, um, were also being very rebellious, and they wanted to stay in one place. God had commanded them to, to go out and fill the earth and be fruitful, uh, but they disobeyed, and they stayed in one place. And apparently, they were trying to reestablish their, their pre-flood pagan empire. Uh, they built this huge structure, probably a pyramid-like uh, structure, uh, based on the fact that we see these these pagan pyramid structures all over the world. Right. You know. So anyways, and so they built this, uh, th this pagan structure, stayed in one place, stayed in one city. But keep in mind, they spoke the same language right. at that time. So God confused their languages in his sovereignty. And so that's the beginning of all the people groups. Right. You're only going to marry someone and have a family if you can communicate with them. And so, um, basically, in that in that one story, you get all these these splits, genetically speaking. Right. And then people began spreading out. God caused them to to spread out over the earth, and in each you know family uh, you know would create their own people group, basically. You know, they would have their own set of unique uh, genetic traits. You could call it a genetic bottleneck, or if you will. But, anyways, that's where we get all the people groups. Mm -hmm. It's it all goes back to Genesis. You know, it all goes back to Adam and Eve. It all goes back to the global flood. It all goes back to the Tower of Babel. That's the only way to make sense of, of the world and, and how we see it now, especially when it comes to humans and all these different people groups. Right, and as the people groups were expanding. Uh, they, well, they of course they separated, they expanded, and then they ran into one another. But at that point, like enough time had passed that these are no longer family members with confused language or whatever. This is a threat, right? You know, this these are other people, um, and like the fear of the other is is something again that has been a part of humanity from the beginning. So, yeah. You know, one other point I think that's worth making is that uh, if we look at modern science, we look at human uh, genetic diversity, the two places in the globe where it's the greatest is in Africa. Africa has the greatest amount of genetic diversity on the planet. You have all different shades of skin colors and short people and tall people and all different sorts of traits. As I mentioned, you even have Asian eyes mm -hmm. in, in some people groups in uh, South Africa. But the second place that has the most diversity is the area around India. So um, let's 
look at the global flood again. So the global flood occurred in it, in, in other podcasts and things we've done, uh, we've shown that it, it provided the perfect uh, conditions for an ice age mm-hmm. immediately after the floods. So all this water would have been, you know, sucked up into ice. All these land bridges uh, would have been exposed, and we can actually we know where those are underwater now. Right. But where would people go first? So if the entire you know top of the globe is covered in ice. Uh, what direction would people go? Well, they'd go east and west. So mm-hmm. in other words, the ark landed in the Middle East. And so people went into Africa and then they went into that area around India. Mm-hmm. And so that's where we see the, gra- gr- the greatest genetic diversity right now. And I've actually got a, a map of that that I show in a presentation I do. Maybe we can pop it up on screen We can right pop now. that up on screen. So, so it's interesting how science just fits perfectly you know, even the modern science of genetics. In fact, a genetic diversity um, in the mitochondrial DNA. So the mitochondria is a, a small or, organelle uh, in your cell. It has its own piece of circular DNA in it. It's about 15,000 bases long. You inherit that from your mother. It's maternally inherited. So there was a creation scientist, uh, Nathaniel Jensen, who actually did a study and he showed three main lineages of mitochondrial DNA. Well, what does in the human race all over the globe? Because they've sequenced human mitochondrial genomes all over the globe, thousands of them. And so what does that tell you? It tells you that that we get our mitochondrial DNA from Noah's uh, son's three wives. Mm-hmm. And it, it you see that immediate uh, split there. So, you know, modern genetics is telling us a whole lot uh, about human origins. And it certainly doesn't support uh, racism <laughs> right. at all. Right. You know, it just shows that the humans are very diverse, and yeah. and God built that into us. You know, He's a mighty Creator, and He built that that genetic variation into the human race, including mechanisms that would actually maintain that variation, and some mechanisms that would even create variation. Mm, absolutely. Well, so that's today. Um, we have we've mentioned briefly, you know, the modern view of racism really started when uh, evolution took hold, and so l- let's talk a little bit more about that. So, uh, modern evolutionary theory took hold, of course, after you know Darwin wrote Origin of Species, and you mentioned three countries in particular: uh, England, Germany, America. Um, so. I know that these were like the superpowers of the time, uh, military expansion, conquest, you know, all that jazz. Um, So with the rise of Darwinian evolution and the rise of those countries, why was this like a perfect storm for people to just be extremely racist? Well, because the people with all the money and the power uh, were, you know, were basically European descent, Caucasian uh, type people, and they wanted to stay at the top of the pyramid, and <laughs> you know, and so that played into it. Evolution was kind of a handy excuse uh, for them to do what they did, and of course now it's it's frowned upon. Right. But really, in some ways, you know, r- racism is being used as a, a political football to create division. Um, and you know, if you can, <laughs> if you want to control a population you cannot control a population of people that are all of one one mind and and they're all standing together you've got to literally create division and the roman empire knew this they did that they created all kinds of division amongst other people so they could control them and in in my opinion i think it's it's being used as a method to divide and conquer mm. uh even today probably yes <laughs> in fact you know they were yeah. Anyways, you have you have politicians, you know, pushing this mm-hmm. all, all the time, claiming that uh, that racism is, is our biggest threat. <laughs> you know, no, it's not the economy. It's it's not all the other terrible issues going on. It's this. In, in fact, the matter is, I personally I don't know a whole lot of racists myself. I've lived in the southern USA uh, for thirty five years now, which is supposedly supposed to be you know, the most racist part of this country. And I don't really run into it that much. I can't say that I haven't occasionally, but it's been pretty rare. Right. 
And so I think I think this whole concept is being used as a political football to divide and conquer. Um, and of course, you know now you can't people aren't openly promoting racism anymore unless they're doing it politically to cause division. Right, because you know it it as as a relatively moral society, you know everyone frowns upon it, which is good. Uh, but in the 19th century they were morally convinced that being racist was good. We talked about this in the Holocaust episode that, you know, science was being used as like this, um, this ladder uh, for, uh, you know, to, to put others down. Um, Can you talk a little bit about like why the, uh, we'll just say the white races, the Caucasian races, why they were at the time considered to be, superior um well i i I think we already touched on it because the power structure Mm -hmm. of that day uh in england and germany and the united states was largely caucasian right was there a scientific reason though supposedly yeah they used evolution as a handy way to to justify uh their their divide and conquer strategy. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at the, you know, remember the old phrase, the sun never sets on the British empire. Right. I mean, the British empire was global and, uh, and they would actually, you know, use these ideas to actually suppress, uh, you know, countries they dominated um, in the United States and the Southern, you know, USA where slavery was a huge part of the economy. You know, they were, Evolution was a, a handy way to justify what they were doing. Mm. Yeah, there was actually a, uh, a very conservative Orthodox Christian theologian in the 1800s, very well respected. Uh, he was a Southern, a Southerner, <laughs> yeah. and uh, he actually tried to promote uh, slavery as, as being biblical. He actually wrote papers on it and so forth. But the Bible does not prescribe uh, slavery and so anyways, he uh, he was in Virginia where probably slavery wasn't as brutal as, say, in, in the deep, deep south, like in Louisiana and places like that, where it was slavery was absolutely, totally brutal. So maybe he saw a lighter version of it, um, but still, it's he was wrong. He was yeah. just flat out wrong. So, and... Uh, no, there's you, no excuse for it. No, right? there's really no excuse for it. And, and I actually read some of his stuff, and it, it was not well grounded biblically as far as the slavery <laughs> issue right. goes. Yeah. One other thing, you know, we need to think of as well is that theologians back in the 1800s were heavily influenced, you know, by science and mm-hmm. not, not just evolution and the idea that there were sub races of humans, but um, you know, even this, this idea of deep time. And, uh, and so, you know, theologians not only compromised uh, some of them, you know, on slavery, but they also compromised on the age of the earth and a literal six-day creation. And so that's, that's when the gap theory became very popular. So, you know, one wonders, you know, how much did evolution and Charles Darwin's ideas of, of racism, how, what effect did that have on, you know, on these ministers and, and theologians back then too? So, yeah. It's it's interesting that it feels like they should have been the people to speak up, right? They should have been the people to be standing strong. Well, what's great is the modern creation science movement, you know, doesn't see uh, evolution as, as as solid science because right. there's really no solid support for it. So we're in a great position now to really refute uh, these you know, these ideas of evolution and racism and, uh, and all the other bad things that go along with evolution as well, a false view of uh, geology and the global flood and, you know, the age of the universe and the age of the earth and all that. So we have so much evidence now in the modern creation science movement to refute, you know, all of these terrible ideas uh, that, that really have arisen connected to or directly related to evolution. Absolutely. Uh Okay, so just as, as, as a little bit of a summary um, before we close out. So we've kind of discussed, you know, um, the Bible does not prescribe racism or slavery. Uh, it's not something that uh, 
even though it is discussed because it is part of history, right? It's not something that's prescribed. Uh, we know that scripturally, you know, when, when we're, you know, in eternity, there will be every tribe, every tongue, every nation, uh, and there's neither Jew nor Greek in the Lord, you know? Um, and so scripturally speaking, racism is not a thing. Uh, we've also kind of discussed how, you know, it kind of rose out of uh, modern racism, kind of rose out of that like evolutionary thinking, you know, uh, Caucasians are the most evolved, um, and then everyone else is lower, um, and so forth. Uh, you know, we know now as a society, even, even, you know, the evolutionists are like, well, that's, that's wrong. Like that's, that's wrong regardless of whether or not they believe that's what evolution says. Uh, we can kind of agree on that. Uh, in our next podcast, uh, I I'd like to kind of discuss what racism looks like from a scientific racism rather. It looks like practically, um, and, uh, and we'll discuss that in the next episode, but before, before we bring this one to a close, do you have any uh, concluding thoughts or anything you want to say to our listeners and viewers? No, I would just like to say, you know, yes, evolution is an idea that contributed to racism, but, you know, once again, the, the real problem is humanity uh, is depraved and sinful <laughs> yeah. ever since Adam because he plunged us into, uh, into this situation where, you know, the heart of man is desperately wicked. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it says in Jeremiah 17. So, and who can know it, you know? It, and so it's important for people, you know, if they want to really have a have a clear perspective, uh, you know, on things, they need to get born again, give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ who died for their sins and read the Bible. And right. because the Bible you know, teaches you how to be a servant to your fellow man, how to love your fellow man, how to, you know, how to be kind, how to turn the other cheek. Uh, you know, the Bible is all about that. It's not about all of this, this uh, hatred and human wickedness mm. uh, connected to racism. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, yeah, it's, it's the wickedness. If evolution didn't uh, provide such an easy excuse for racism, humanity would have found another excuse regardless. <laughs> Probably so. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next episode. Uh, to all of our listeners and viewers, thank you for joining us. Um, we know that this can be kind of a divisive topic and we know that, you know, th this is a real problem and we just hope that this is encouraging. Uh, and, and if you're a believer, we hope that this was that this empowers you to go and speak about, you know, hey, the Bible is does not prescribe racism. That's just a false view of of Scripture. Um, and so we hope that it was encouraging, and we hope that we you can use that uh, as you go out and share the gospel. Uh, if you uh, found this encouraging, would you please like, subscribe, share this with your friends and family? And if you want to get this podcast, the Creation Podcast, a week early or our other monthly podcast, creation.live, uh, two weeks early. Uh, you can do that by becoming a member here on YouTube or on Patreon. Uh, there's also other uh, goodies, depending on what tier you choose to uh, join that. So, uh, but for now, we'll see you next time on the Creation Podcast. We want to say a huge thank you to our members and patrons. If you'd like to see your name here and unlock perks like early access to our podcasts, members only polls and live streams, behind the scenes footage or exclusive video content, links are in the description below.